we will begin to look at solving advanced circuits. It's important that you understand the lessons up to this point and you've done uh, the exercises, watch the clips and know the material quite well. Now, when you take a look at an advanced circuit, sometimes you look at it and you think, I don't even know what to do. I don't know where to start. I need to find that. Uh, how do I do that? And if you are not sure what to do, do something. Do what you can do. Uh, you have a lot of knowledge now and you say, well, I, I know that I could find this, uh, but I didn't ask for that. Well, maybe when you find that, you'll find something else. And then that gives you something else and it's, aha, now I can find the thing that I'm looking for. So just start. Do what you can do and you'll uh, suddenly end up solving the thing you want. Uh, the other thing is think of it as a game. So the more you play a game, the better you get at it. And that's exactly what happens with circuits. Pretty soon you just have that sort of intuition. I, I know exactly what to do and where to start. Sometimes it helps to work backwards. You think, okay, I need this. But to find that, I would need, ah, if I have this, then I know what to do. And so that's another way of, of approaching this whole thing. Um, the other thing I would say is sometimes... Uh, it's good to get the big picture and that equation, the total voltage equals the total current times the total resistance. That one is a good starting point sometimes. Uh, and you'll see all of this in the uh, sample problems that we use. Uh, the other thing finally is that there's uh, more than one way to solve them. And maybe once you've solved it one way, you think, oh, why don't I try it another way and just check my answer. So uh, think of it as a game, have some fun, uh, study these examples that we'll be doing, and then try lots and lots of problems. The more you do, the better you'll get. The first question says, what are the values of I1, I2, and I3? Well, I look at this and realize it's a series circuit. Therefore, I1, I2, and I3 are all the same. They will have the same value. I1 will equal I2, which will equal I3. That's what happens in a series circuit. I know that. I also know that the total voltage is equal to the current times the total resistance. And I look at this and realize that the voltage is 14 volts. That's easy. That's what's supplied. Is equal to I, which is my unknown. If I know I, I know I1, I2, and I3. And the total resistance, this is a series circuit. And I have a 4 ohm and a 3 ohm in series. And I just add 4 ohms plus 3 ohms. And I have my total resistance, you don't need a calculator for sure, is 7 ohms. And I realize this is something easy to solve. And the current is simply uh, 14 over 7. And again, this you don't need a calculator in any sense of the word. And I have then two amps, but I look and see that uh, properly everything it looks like would be two significant figures. And so I would write uh, 2.0 amps. I would write I equals 2.0 amps. So there's the first one. And now let's go and try the second one. 